Good news, everyone. We've got ourselves a new Shadow of War video to tear into. Courtesy of IGN, this video is seven minutes of purely new footage, focusing on the gear that Talion can acquire over the course of the game. So without further ado, let's get to it. One of the first shots after the introduction we see is of Talion standing in front of the recently taken over Fortress of Saragost, the same fortress from the first gameplay trailer. Just from this shot alone, we can safely say that the fortresses are a part of the maps themselves, and not something that you load into separately. Whether you can get into these fortresses without sieging them is still up in the air at this point. When going into the inventory screen, the narrator goes into what each piece of gear means. These four here were quite obvious as to what they were. You know, your sword, dagger, armor, and cloak. But these two here struck me as interesting. See, I thought this would just be the bow and only the bow. It's actually the ranged slot. See, instead of finding new bows to use, you can instead opt to equip new hammers for Celebrimbor, and he can apparently throw them like a tomahawk among other things. As for the ring of power, I figured we wouldn't just be finding new rings laying about, so it's good to know that the inventory slot here is for new runes to equip into the ring itself. When we see a new sword equipped, a couple UI things stand out. All gear has benefits that are tied to the slot in question. Cloaks vary in stats like better stealth or more health, and daggers increase the amount of stealth damage you do. Here in the sword slot, open combat melee damage increases with better loot. You have your difference in stat comparisons right here. And then there's this. Since we're going to be getting a ton of loot, it would make sense to be able to dispose of old gear you're never going to use. It seems like you can destroy gear for silver coins, the currency located here at the top of the screen. As to why there are silver and gold coins, I'm not so sure yet. In order to get better gear, you have to go kill captains and warlords like you did to get runes in Shadow of Mordor. So the narrator opens up the hierarchy screen. This screen here does look like the final version of the UI, and it certainly looks a lot cleaner than what we saw in the Minas Ithil video. However, there's even more here to look into. First off, we can tell that the owners of Saragost are of the Mythic tribe, not only by the UI in the top left, but of the fortress itself bearing a similar style if we had chosen Zorg in the gameplay reveal. Another quick mention to the previous video is that all of these captains not visible are actually enemy captains not shown yet. For each area, you need to build up an army from scratch, so to do so, you'll have to dominate the captains in the area. This would explain then why the hierarchy screen has no allies. We simply haven't created an army yet to take the fortress. The next thing I want to take a look at here is the map itself. At the very top, you can clearly see what looks like the fortress itself, followed by a whole area that is considered part of that stronghold. All of these areas in red behave the exact same way like they did in Shadow of Mordor. They have high concentrations of orcs that can sound an alarm if you're caught sneaking around them. You can also see on the map the river where some of the shots of the Drake's video took place, helping us get some sort of sense of scale as to how big the area is. Another thing that pops up here are these small pips above these four captains. They all happen to have special icons as well, symbolizing power struggles just like in Shadow of Mordor. So these pips could mean their strength compared to one another, or even their health. Conflicts only happen if you either participated in them or advanced time to either day or night. However, in this game, I'm getting the feeling that there could now be a full day-night cycle. We've seen shots of this region now in both daytime and sunset, and there have also been shots of what could be Minas Ithil at night. If this is true, then it's entirely possible that these conflicts are on a timer and will resolve automatically over time. When we zoom into Urmasi, we see his strengths and weaknesses like with other captains. But here, we see for the first time epic traits. These traits are probably acquired as a captain levels up over time, further increasing the difficulty of these engagements. We also get more information about the commander class trait, and we see all sorts of new and interesting traits being added into the game. We also see a brand new type of enrage through frost attacks, which also lets us know that frost is now another element in the game. I'll also note here that in an earlier video, I thought that this number was some sort of strength level to a trait. Turns out, it's just simply the number of traits in that category. While searching for Urmasi, a number of UI elements pop up. On the minimap itself, there appear to be ally markers within that large group we're looking at. But if we skip ahead a bit, we actually get a glimpse of what it actually is. See that symbol above the orc's head? You should recognize it because it's the exact same symbol in the predator skill tree. Now that we have some context, it's certainly possible that this skill involves dominating them. 
and the perk with the worm symbol could mean that we could also gather information out of them as if they were also worms themselves. We also see these two icons briefly appear here as well as on the minimap during the quick cuts of the fight. Unfortunately, we never get a good look as to what these things are in the world, so I won't try and make a guess. Lastly, on the bottom of the UI, we have a new summon icon not seen in the previous videos. It turns out, we just saw that icon a moment ago in the inventory screen. It's actually the currency icon, and I believe it's actually the Crest of Gondor. If so, then these must be the human bodyguards that are possible to summon. After defeating Urmasi and picking up his sweet looking dagger, we're introduced to a number of gear traits. Higher tiers of gear have their own abilities, as well as special challenges to unlock even more powerful abilities on top of that. Note that quick throw is not specifically what you use with the dagger, but actually the throwing knives you chuck mid-battle. We then go dominate and kill Graug in order to collect a special gem from it to socket into our shiny new dagger. Each piece of gear has sockets to fix gems into them, and looks as if we can slot up to three gems at once for each gear piece. Each gem has a different effect depending on which type of equipment it's socketed in, and it also appears that you can upgrade gems to become better gems. It requires three of the same gem to do so, however. So for instance, if we get three warrior gems, we can turn them into one curved warrior gem for slightly better stats. We then go back to the hierarchy page to look up the legendary Captain Ronk the Gravewalker. At first, I wasn't sure why he was supposedly legendary and how he had a chance to drop legendary loot, but then I noticed something about his name, or rather, behind his name. Behind the name and title is a deep blue background, the exact same color as the legendary rune he drops later on. To test this theory, I quickly scrub back to Urumasi, and sure enough, he has the exact same background just like the epic dagger he dropped. Ronk is also cursed, and we can see the effects of curse during the fight. If it's not clear, the minimap UI in the bottom left has been replaced with a giant flaming eye of sorrow. <clears throat> Sorry. I thought Talion had been grabbed the same way he was grabbed in the gameplay reveal, but in the very beginning of the video, we actually see the Ronk fight going on, and the minimap is still there. So what changes? Simple. Ronk got enraged, triggering the curse effect on the minimap. When we gain the legendary rune after killing Ronk, we see even more crazy trait bonuses. Not only is there two regular traits and a special challenge trait, but there also appear to be special gear set traits that are acquirable. These bonuses are specifically for our army, decreasing the amount of damage our troops can take, but more importantly, giving our troops cursed weapons. Curse seems like it's becoming incredibly important since it keeps popping up in multiple places, so I can imagine there's a lot more we don't know about just yet. There's also something special about the challenge on this room that I want to address. It says here that you have to dominate a mystic orc that's at least level 60 or higher. However, the max level Talion can reach is only 60, implying that orcs can continue to increase in level past our own max level. Now, if that's not challenging endgame, I don't know what is. As we skim through the really awesome looking Bright Lord set, some traits on the gear stick out. For one, the sword gives you wrath, something not covered yet. So we have focus, might, and now wrath skills to work with. Second, the wrath is given to us on performing an Ice Storm finisher, an ability that's also new. I have a sneaking suspicion that it's an ability that does frost damage in an area of effect after you kill a target. Finally, once we cycle through the gear, we see Celebrimbor's Elven Wrath get upgraded due to the gear we equip. After killing one orc, he now splits into multiple copies and fires at multiple targets, killing all of them. A, that's friggin' awesome. B, gear is also another way we can change our abilities in cool ways. C, Wrath is possibly tied to the murder everything mode that Celebrimbor goes into. Something like a timer of sorts and how long he can stay in that mode. I'm definitely down for it, especially if I can prolong my time as a vengeful elven wraith that lays waste to absolutely everything. And that is all I got out of the video. There was certainly way more here than usual. So if I happen to miss anything, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching everyone, and I will see you next time.